Welcome back to the Student Hub Live STEM Showcase. We have had an amazing morning so far, learning about the various ways which science, technology, engineering and mathematics students can engage with teaching and learning at the Open University. And in this session, we take a special look at the Open STEM Labs, which we've been hearing about and visiting throughout the day. And I'm joined by Nick Braithwaite, who is the um, Associate Dean for Academic Excellence um, and is often in one of the various STEM Labs. But Nick, today you're going to tell us about some of the remote access um, and also to explain more broadly how all of these various labs linked together. Uh, yes, okay, can we uh, get the slide up that we yes, had that, that have shows the, the overall the open framework STEM labs. of okay. this. Yeah. So the, uh, the idea is that if you'd been on a conventional campus there would have been a laboratory building, there'd have been a place to go to and I see we've got the, the slide showing now and that building is the the outer boundary there where it says the open STEM labs but it's not a real building, it's a virtual building but it's still got the same mindset. If you're on a campus, you go to the labs, you'd have your notebook, and this would be the lab session. And you'd be devoting time to that. Uh, it's, it's not a lecture, it's a time for implementing some of the learning and doing a little bit of discovery by doing. So that's, that's why we call it the Open STEM Labs. Uh, open because it's the Open University, and STEM for obvious reasons, and labs because it is learning by doing. Within that, it's as if it were a real building, we've got different floors, if you like, and one of them is labelled the, uh, the Open Science Laboratory, that was actually the first one we commissioned. And then we've got the Open Science Observatories, we've got the Open Engineering Laboratory, and we have on-campus labs. So we've, we've blurred the boundary, it goes seamlessly from the real world into the virtual world. And right now, on campus, we've got some STEM students doing laboratory skills work in the on-campus labs. And right now we have available, but the modules, it's a bad time for getting modules around, but we have available to students some of our activities from the Open Engineering Lab. They're still accessible to, to students. Brilliant. And we've just seen in that previous video um, some of the virtual labs as well. Yes, that's right. Um, the virtual and real, it, it's, a, it's again a bit of a blur. The, the hallmark of what we do, the, the real key to it, is that it is real data and an authentic interface. Sometimes that data can be got from the archives. For example, if you'd scanned a slide uh, for a microscope at very high resolution, you can then bring it out of the archive and people can see different parts of the slide at high resolution or the entire slide, we can downsample it. So that we would call a, a virtual laboratory experience. Uh, but then you could have a real microscope. And I can show you examples of, of both of those in, in just a moment. So now, that, that would be amazing. It. Because I hear you were talking to Sam Jima and showing him about how the Open University teaches STEM. Yes. And what was his response? Uh, well, he's, uh, he's, he's nice and blown away by it. Um, uh, he, uh, he gets what we're doing, I think. He, he, in one speech earlier on, he talked about uh, some universities having an uncanny knack at being at the forefront, slightly, slightly ahead of the game, and uh, he was referring to some of the things that we've been doing in STEM and in the Open STEM Labs in particular. Uh, we also, let me just begin by saying, we, this was on Monday, we went down to his office, he wanted to talk to some Open University students. Normally he visits a campus, uh, how do you visit the Open University campus if you want to find students? Because this is the one place where they're thin on the ground. Yeah. Uh, so we said let's do an, an Adobe Connect session and we found uh, eight students to connect to him and we had an associate lecturer coordinating a, a, a conversation and there he was at his desk, actually with my very laptop here, just looking at it, looking at the photographs of the students, talking to the students, engaging them, asking them questions such as, what would you do if you had my job for the day? <laughs> what did they say? I, I thought you might ask me yeah. that. Um, I think some of them thought that it would be rather fun, uh, and they were very keen to uh, ensure that uh, people knew about the Open University, people knew about the opportunities of the Open University. And, and so they do things, and this is that they were encouraging this in other things, they would do things to try to raise the awareness at the time when people are beginning to, to make decisions or, or beginning to explore whether or not it's for them. Uh, and there were some nice stories amongst those particular students about how it was that they'd come across the Open University. And some of it was really quite chance stuff, but once we got the hook in, once they saw what we were at, then we realised we were for each other but just mm. at the beginning. We, we maybe have to do a little bit more mm. to, to push ourselves out there and, and get seen. But overall, Sam, Sam loved it, and, and he particularly liked it. I showed him one of the things on here, one of the applications on here, and he was itching to get his fingers on the keyboard and, and start controlling what we were seeing. So. Well, let's take a look, Nick. Yes, let's, uh, let's do that. Let's see if I've got the very one here. Look, um, I showed him this one. Okay which is a picture of a, uh, of a skull. I'll just make sure the brightness is up there. This is a picture of a skull. Now, I should be able to uh, probably zoom in a little bit somehow. 
Well, I can turn it, there we are, I can turn it around. It's as if I'm holding it in my hand. Uh, and I think if I, wait a minute, there we are, if I zoom in, it's a, ooh, sorry, it's a bit, a bit fast there, I can get up close to it. Uh, now I should be able, possibly, I might want to compare that with another one. So now I've got two skulls and I can rotate them side by side. This is an example of what we would call virtual. So this is a, a virtual experiment. These are real skulls. We've scanned them, we've taken the photographs and put them into this environment so that students can do things with these as if they were in the lab, at the bench, with the real skull, able to, to do things like making measurements. So let me just see if I can but demonstrate that. I imagine that. this must be a lot easier in the sense of having something digital to measure. You must be able to get a lot more accurate data. Uh, yes, in principle, because we could make measurements from here, from that point on the skull to, say, this point here. That's going through the skull. That's not very good. It's probably better to go around the edge of the skull, just like you had a tape measure over yeah. the skull. Yeah. And, and you could make, possibly make a an easier, e more easily make an accurate measurement mm, mm, using mm. this digitally because we, we're measuring pixels along here and mm. knowing in 3D where the object is, mm, so mm. it's better than a tape measure in yeah, actual fact. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly easier than trying to hold a tape measure on and go, and go around a, a skull, so in a sense it's not a bad way to do it at all. Yeah. Even if you had the real skull, you might want to digitise it so that you could uh, do it this way. So we're not making compromises, we're trying to get better than the real thing, that's what yeah, we say. Yeah. Virtually better yeah. than the real thing. Because technology has enabled us to make so many changes and, and really, you know, aside from being able to let anyone access some of this material and therefore get a lot of measurements of that data so that it's more reliable, um, you know, again, the opportunity to be able to do something like this where, you know, you couldn't get a skull and measure it in another, you know, institution very easily is, is accessible to our students. Uh, yes, it, that's right. And it, it's easy to add other skulls if mm, we want. Mm, so this, mm. this can only grow. It's not limited by number. In mm, a conventional mm, laboratory, mm. you're limited by having maybe one yeah. or two skulls to look yeah. at and having to pass them around the group. Any number of people more or less can look at this at the same time, hundreds of people. Yeah. It's been used in, in the S112 yeah. uh, module uh, by students already. and. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing more things like this. Uh, we do, I think this is one of the things I'd say, you know, we, we do this well. Yeah. I, I, it's my colleagues who are doing it. It's not me that's doing it. I'm just uh, demonstrating it here for you. Can I show you one or two yeah, other things? Yeah, please do. Okay, let's try uh, this one. I mean, sometimes you just want to uh, look at, at another example, looking at something, you just want to see it turn in front of you. So there's a little video that shows a piece of quartz here, mm -hmm. and I can rotate it as if I had it in my hand. Yep. That's something that I, yep. I, I quite like to do. But we can do better than that because we can have other samples of quartz as well. I'll stop that going by, by choosing this one here, which is a, a look at a piece of amethyst. That's the, the purple material on here. I'm not a geologist. But I, I may go out to my depth shortly. <laughs> but I can zoom in on here as if I had it in my hand with a little magnifier. Yeah. And, I, and I'm getting close in and I'm seeing the, 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 the shapes and the sizes of the crystals. I could do measurements on there. There are things labeled down here that says measure. And I can, there'll be labels on there that you can, you can put on. So we can make this a little bit smarter than the object itself because we could tag various parts of it. Mm -hmm. We can draw people in. And, and we wouldn't just give this. I mean, you have to give this as, with a, a teaching narrative mm -hmm. with some scaffolding. Mm -hmm. But so often in, in laboratory and practical work, in the conventional setting, people have got three hours. That's the lab time. They've yeah. got to come in. They've got to work through this list, do this, measure that, do this, write that down. We can be a little bit freer. I mean, we've still got issues about we don't want to take too much of people's time, so mm. we have to help them. Mm. But there isn't that pressure. Mm. There isn't mm. that pressure to get out by five o'clock. Mm. We're open 24-7. Mm. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to being open, though, and, and doing things, you might want to be connecting to a real instrument. And I'm just wondering if this is a real instrument. No, it's not. Is this a real instrument? This is a real microscope now. It's just down the, uh, the corridor of this particular building as it happens. But, you know, it could be in Timbuktu for, uh, for all the functionality matters here because it's over the internet. Um, I'm, there's a microscope slide there and you yeah. can tell me you see nothing. Yeah, no. Oh, so what's missing it must be some, some light. Yeah. If you don't put light on, you, you won't see anything. So I'll try putting the light on and hope that uh, the, uh, the microscope just needs to be just told. Is this uh, something that students have to book into? Is it something that... Yes, for this one you, you would have to, have to book. Because you are making physical changes because I'm making to the physical microscope changes down the corner. Yeah. To the microscope. And you just, all, the, all I did then was to reboot the, the, the web page yeah. because I've just changed which Wi-Fi connection I'm using ah, yes. as I came into the studio. So uh, it's tolerant of, of us doing silly things. Yeah. It's just like the real world. You, yeah, can, yeah, you, you, yeah. Know, you can forget to put the light on. You can zoom in on the wrong bit. Real microscope. So zoom in, have a look at this. It, what is it? It's a plant stem. And this is looking down at the, uh, the, the, the core of the, of the plant stem and further out, 
uh, or I don't have to zoom out, I can just drag it out. I can go across to the edge of the plant stem. You'll see the curvature of the edge of the plant stem down here, and the different cells, the different structures. We can get right in as, as if we were there. Yeah. We don't actually have to be next to the instrument anymore. And, and this is a thing that the, how life has changed. In, although this microscope has got some tubes and you take the specs off and, yeah. and look down the tubes like this, actually that's not how microscopes are used yeah. much these days. Yeah. You put it on a screen yeah. and you yeah. interact with it on a screen. Sarah said she really liked using the microscope in uh, SDK 100. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, and the we digital have a, microscope. We have a virtual version mm. of this microscope, which I, I suspect is, uh, if I click on that one over here, it's this one over here. And I can actually get the same slide if, if I'm careful. Yes, don't worry about that. It'll, Come on, run Adobe Flash. <laughs> Allow. Real, real world, this is really happening, so we've got to be prepared to have to make decisions on the fly. Open a catalogue of plant tissue, and you see here, this looks very similar to what we were just looking at. It's slightly out of focus. Oh, I can make it worse. I'm very good at making focus worse. Joanne uh, said yeah. she loved some of these microscope activities, yeah. and Carol said she was uh, doing the digital microscope in S111. Right. Uh, yes, well, this is this is what we would call a digital microscope, uh, and I, if I just go across the, the slide there, you see the edge. Do you see the same features that mm. we've seen before? The, the cells changing as we go across the plant stem. It's actually a different plant stem, yeah. but it's a plant stem. This one, however, millions of people could look at it at the same time. Right. The other one, the real microscope down the corridor, yeah. you have to book a session. Right, right, right. So in order to scale that, we have to buy more microscopes. Yeah. In order to scale this. We just invite the, the students to join. And we want to, to mix the two. Yeah. You have to be able to do the same things on this as you can do on, yeah. on the other. Yeah. But while we're on microscopes, I, I, I get excited about the next thing I want to show you, which is this one here, which is the, optic, uh, the electron microscope. Yeah. Uh, and this one here is showing a, a creature which um, last seen, uh, apart from by me, by Sam Chima in his office. I got him to get up close to this. So let's see what he was looking at. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to zoom in on, on uh, well, let's zoom in on this part here, see if we can ask people what we might be looking at there. So I just put a little mesh around it and right. it should, if I've got this right, uh, if not I will have to, come on. But the beauty of this is that you cannot break it, can you Nick? <laughs> I haven't done yet. <laughs> I haven't done yet. I've just had to reload that page because of the, uh, the change I'd made earlier. Let's see if that Gets it any more responsive? Yeah. If it doesn't, there we are. Yeah. Now, now it's done more or less what I wanted. I wanted it over there actually, so I can just drag it like that. This I is can't. happening yeah. now, just down the corridor from here. Wow. But again, it could could be anywhere. Let's move it along a little bit more. If the focus isn't so good, is it? Yeah. Now, in the early days of, of microscopy, getting the focus just right was yeah, difficult. Yeah, yeah, Electron yeah. microscopy, yeah. doubly difficult. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you go on courses for it. Uh, with software these days, all instruments are easier to yeah, drive. Yeah, yeah. And this is the real world. So for our students, I want them to go to, to job interviews and, and to be asked questions like, oh, Open University, yes, I, I, no, I don't suppose you've ever used. There. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. I don't suppose you've ever used an electron microscope. And I want to ask students, anybody listening now, use this one, I want you to look the interviewer in the eye and say, yes, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of, course we've, of course we've been able to see one. Now, you've seen this program if you haven't used one for yourself. Now, this actually is a, is a rice weevil. Wow. I know you were wondering what it was. It's, yeah. it's, it's a rice weevil on its back. Uh, this is probably the, the mouth end of it. Um, I think that down here, this, this, it looks reminiscent of, of a fly's eye. Yeah. And I'm no expert on these things, but I, I'm going to suggest that this is probably vestigial eye. There isn't a lot of rice. That, sorry, there is a lot of rice. <laughs> there isn't a lot of light yeah. in a bag of rice. Yeah. So there isn't a lot of call for an eye, yeah. and so I, I suspect that we might have, uh, you see the little facets in here, we might have something that once upon a time was an eye, or it might just be a, a genetically damaged yeah. eye. I'm getting it to focus in yeah. again, and there it is, getting nice and crisp. Wow. And what, what we're seeing, the structure that we're seeing, is using this electron microscope technology. Yeah. The beauty of it is it goes to a very small scale. There's a scale bar at the, yeah. the bottom of the screen. I'll put my fingers representing that bar here. That's, it says 90 micrometers, that's one hundredth, more or less a hundredth of a, of a millimeter. Wow. Um, no, wait a minute, let me get that right. 90, 100, it's a tenth of a millimeter, tenth of a millimeter, but for, for measurement, comparison purposes, it's always nice to have something familiar. Yeah. So if I take a, a hair here, which I'm yeah. not going to pull out, there's yeah. not enough to go around. We can imagine. But, yeah, <laughs> I, a human hair would occupy about a quarter of that distance between my fingers now. Yeah. Four human hairs across there. So the hairs on a rice weevil 
on a tiny fraction wow. of the hairs on a, on a human. Gosh, Nick. It's no wonder you've won awards for this. Uh, yes. You and the team. Yes, OK, but perhaps I could uh, tell you about those. Yeah. Um, we've been uh, fortunate over the, over the years. Um, we have here a Times Higher Education Award from 2014, which is Outstanding ICT Initiative. Uh, then uh, we, the Times Higher Education Leadership and Management Awards in 2017. That was really to do with the, the project that we had about the Open STEM Labs, about bringing, making live these experiments that people can, can come and use online. Uh, then over here we have the, uh, the Guardian Teaching Excellence Awards, which came at a, at a really good time earlier this year in uh, March, April time, I think it was. Um, yeah, it was probably April, uh, and that was for what we call the the delivery framework of this, which is the Internet of Laboratory Things, mm. like the Internet of Things, but mm. the Internet of Laboratory, laboratory Things. things yeah. You're connecting to a computer, which is connected to an experiment, and it's wow. Really Excellent. Nick, it sounds incredibly exciting and, and I love the way that students can actually get their hands on something like this and how easy it is to be able to use, I guess, once you know what you're looking for and, and that's where the tool aspect comes into play, but also how reassuring that you're not going to break something and that you can have access again to a multitude of stimuli to look at. Yeah, well, that's an interesting point because when we first started doing this uh, with just the virtual experiments, mm. talking to people from the Students' Association, few years back now, I remember the, the, there was a nervousness being expressed about w w not liking to do this because we might break it. Yeah. And that was when it was entirely in the virtual world. Wow. Now we're, we're connecting to the real world, so actually the prospect of breaking is a, is a reality. Yeah. But that's for us to, yeah. to build yeah. in sufficient yeah. protections. We need these things to be able to run without technicians present yeah. all the time. Yeah. It needs to be fail safe. And in a way, you know, I think it needs to be able to go wrong. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what happens in real life. We mustn't protect people from the truth. I don't want to hide things. I don't want to say, this is the bit to look mm, at. Go mm, there mm. now. Go and discover mm. and, and, and explore that way. That is really what learning, mm. for me, about experience, learning by experience. Mm. It, it has to do that. You have mm. to be able to, to, to get there, to ask, a, a what if? What if I go too close to that? Mm. Um, when, and sometimes I do go too close to things and I knock them over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that, I say to students in the lab, if, if you haven't broken it, maybe you weren't using it hard yeah, enough. Yeah. So I don't, I don't mind if things get broken. Deliberate damage, yeah, don't no, mind that. No, no. Willful damage, but I was just trying to find out more yeah. is, a, is a reasonable And if you don't excuse. learn uh, by mistakes, you don't learn. So I think you learn more mm, from mistakes, mm, actually. Mm, Sometimes mm. getting the right answer first time, you're not learning Absolutely. very much. You're Absolutely. really good to get it wrong, yes. Brilliant. Well, Nick, thank you so much. And um, even virtual labs have to live somewhere. So we're going to take our audience on a tour of the campus now right. um, as we have a half an hour um, break. And then we'll be back live for our next session um, where we're going to look at student support and careers and, and show you some of the team up in our Manchester office as well. So we're going to do a live link up to there. So I hope you enjoy the campus tour. Keep chatting. Thank you, Nick, for giving us that um, wonderful welcome. demonstration here. And we will see you back live at 1.15. See you then.